Harry's wife. His drug abuse will be used against him. It's been repeatedly reported on that Harry enjoys the gange. He likes rolling a big blunt, sparking up and kicking back. We also know that he's had involvement with psychedelics and cocaine. There may be other illegal substances that he's dabbled in also. He's been candid about this, talking about it in an interview, and of course detailing this information in WAH. This, of course, is potentially problematic for him. First of all, there is the suggestion, of course, that if he were to go elsewhere and try to return to the United States, he could be prohibited from entering as a consequence of self-confessed drug use. However, what is going to be of a greater concern to him if he manages to crank his ginger brain into gear is the fact that his wife will use this information against him. First of all, somebody that actually cared for another individual may well say, I don't have an issue with you taking drugs. It's likely, for instance, that they've taken drugs together. But the fact is, she would, if she had any emotional empathy for him, counsel him against making an omission about drug use in a publication, i.e. sticking it in black and white, creating clear evidence by way of confession. Somebody that cared for another individual genuinely would say, I don't think it's a good idea for you to admit to this. However, with Harry's wife, not only did she fail to caution him against that, but one can see very clearly that she's likely to have encouraged him to make reference to his drug use in why. Why? There are those that would think, ah, well, she sat there, putting her fingers together, going, bwah, here is my plan to shaft old ginger bollocks. Not so. Remember, she is a middle mid-range narcissist. And as I have pointed out time and time and time again, she makes what I describe as schoolgirl errors, whereby there are so many collateral consequences as a result of the things that she does, it demonstrates that she's not thinking ahead, that she's not calculating, because if she did, she would not create these collateral consequences. Instead, what has happened is that in that moment, as she's dealing with Harry, and he was perhaps jotting down some thoughts in relation to the creation of a manuscript for Wa, or discussing it with Harry's wife, he may well have mentioned, I think, oh, uh, I'll include, yeah, some uh, info about the fact that I've uh, done the gange, yeah? Explain how it's really opened my mind up. And of course, she'll have encouraged him by suggesting, good idea, you can demonstrate that that's part of your healing journey. Or, if he wasn't going to mention it, it may well be the case that she actively encouraged him, saying to him, Harry, why don't you include information about how cannabis has helped you, that cocaine didn't, but cannabis has helped you mellow out, get understanding, has helped you heal. That'll encourage other people also. It's useful for them to see the journey that you've been involved in. And of course, you can make mention of the fact of how I have helped him. Facade management and assertion of control over him as the intimate partner primary source. I'm sure that you can picture in your mind's eye the scene whereby either he mentions it and she agrees that he should include it, or she suggests that he do so. She wasn't doing this because she was thinking, ha 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 ha, I will now catch him out at a later juncture, but rather her narcissism was guiding her to do it in the now, so that it was included for the purposes of controlling ginger bollocks, but also for creating a particular picture towards the readers of Wah that makes it look like she's kind and cares for him and was supportive with regard to his healing. It manages her facade. The advantage that it provides her with is the fact that a later juncture, when perhaps post-disengagement or disengagement is on the horizon and her narcissism needs to control him further, it will rifle through its box of tricks and then go, well, well, well. Lucky here, what have we got? A sack marked Harry's drug abuse. Let's open this fucker and unleash it on him.
Essentially, the narcissism as continuing to assert control over Harry and draw fuel from him, and remember, he is just a washing machine to her. She doesn't actually love him or care about him. All she requires is that he's easy to control, that he provides fuel, character traits and residual benefits. And because his fuel has gone stale, and there'll be instances where he has threatened her sense of control, he's currently in sustained devaluation. He's heading towards potential disengagement, as I've explained in parts passing. Therefore, there will come a point where she will need to control him. For instance, perhaps because they have separated and he's telling her that she's only going to get X amount of money or there's problems in relation to the children, whatever it might be. And she needs to nullify that threat to control. And for instance, in relation to the children, whether you believe they exist or not, let's assume for the moment they do, if there was a custody issue, one thing that would nullify the threat to control posed by him seeking custody of the children would be to make out that he's a waster and a druggie and therefore a risk to the children. She would have no hesitation in bringing that forward. Her narcissism would ensure that it would happen to smear him and, of course, take him below the knees with regard to any application to have custody over the children. Essentially, where something has happened in the past, the narcissist will always bring it up where it serves a purpose to do so. There's no emotional empathy for you, and therefore the narcissist won't think to themselves, well, I'm not going to use that against them. Everything is available for use against you. And therefore all of the things that you did during the relationship when it was in the golden period, and of course then even when you were in the sustained devaluation, but particularly the golden period when perhaps you were, you let your guard down and you allowed that person intimate access to your world, perhaps sharing with them things that you wouldn't want the world to know. For instance, that the fact that you like to dress in nappies and have grown men piss over you, something that you would only share with your partner, but then gets thrown in your face at a later juncture, because where that partner is a narcissist, they simply don't care about you. And something that you've admitted to in the past can then be brought up at a future point, again, for the purchase, purpose rather of the prime aims. And it's similar for Harry. As a narcissist, for instance, will leave a jumper at your house because the narcissist is lazy and has no sense of accountability. And then after your relationship is ended, the narcissist contacts you two months later, utilising the presence of the jumper as a pretext to say, oh, I left my jumper at your house. Can I come round and collect it? Which allows the hoover to take place in the first place and then to expand on the hoover by coming around to see you to try and draw fuel from you and assert control over you. It's similar with his drug abuse. The, something that's happened in the past will be resurrected by the narcissist and used against that individual for the purposes of getting to the prime aims. Harry has scored a major own goal with regard to the admissions about his drug use. Encouraged and not advised to the contrary by his wife at the time because it suited her purposes to allow him to make those disclosures. And essentially, she gets two bites of the cherry. In the first place, she uses it to assert control over him and the readership by allowing him to make these disclosures, and at some future point, she will throw it back in his face for the purposes of nullifying a threat to control that he poses. Harry's fucked up in that respect, and it will be used against him. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.